Hi, I'm John, and welcome to the final installment of my N-Scale Long Distance Train Build. In this episode, I'm going to show you how I connect a Sprog device to my computer and use JMRI to speed match the locomotives. My goals for this program are to show you how the Sprog connects the computer to the track, to get the locomotives speed matched, and to go run the full train at the South Bay Historical Railroad Society's N-Scale layout. It'll be nice to see it all come together, so let's head over to the workbench. All right, so I have the locomotives here on my workbench, and I also have a circle of track. That track is a 12 inch radius circle of Bachman Easy Track. I'm just using that because that's what I have. I like it because it has the connectors on the little piece of curved track that makes it easy for me to hook up the computer to it. Here's what I'll be using to complete this project. I have my laptop on the left, I have an iPad next to it, and my iPhone, as well as a Sprog. The Sprog comes with a power supply, and then I use a USB cord to connect it to the computer, and alligator clips to connect it to the track. So on videos in the past, I've been asked what a sprog is and how you hook it up. So as part of this program, I'm going to show you the sprog that I have, and I'll show you how I hook it up to my computer. So this is my sprog 2, and it's basically just a box that has three connection points. On the top left there, where you see the red and black wires, that's where the track connections go. Next to it, you have the power connections. And then closest to the camera at the bottom of your screen, you'll see a standard USB 2 port. This is the same kind of USB port that you see on devices like printers. We've all seen those before. So the power just gets plugged into a wall. And then you take your track connections and connect them up to the track like this. I use alligator clips because they're easy for me to deal with. And then you just take your USB cord, plug it in here, and then plug the other end into your computer. That's how you connect a Sprog device. All right, so the next thing I'm gonna do, now that I have the track all set up, is I'm going to open JMRI. JMRI is pretty cool, but it's not magical. We have to configure it. So we're gonna to go to the Preferences tab here. That'll open up this little menu, and we're gonna go into Connections. On this tab, I'm going to tell my computer, or JMRI, that we're using a Sprog here in the manufacturer, and the connection is also through the Sprog. So I'll select that here. And then the serial port, that's which USB port it's plugged into. And ours is in this one. So depending what kind of system you have, this may be different, but this is just how I configure my Sprog. Save out of it and restart, and you'll be ready to go when it comes back. So I've placed number 123 on the track, and I'm going to use Decoder Pro to identify it. I already know what it is, but I'm just showing you how you can do this. And it comes up with, as soon as it's done identifying, it comes up with 123. So you go into Program, down here on the bottom right, and it brings up this sheet. They call this a sheet. I'm going to expand the sheet here and show you the sheet has a whole bunch of different tabs along the top. The one that we're interested in for speed matching is this one. Now, there's a more complex way of doing what I'm about to show you, but this is really all you need, especially if you want it to be close enough and you don't want to spend all day doing it because this is the other speed table. And it has, I don't know, what is that? 20 or 30 different variables on it, whereas this one only has three. This is really all you need. 
Now that you know where to find the basic speed table that I just showed you, it's time to start checking how fast the locomotives run. I happen to know from when I tested these, when I installed the decoders, that number 134 runs faster than number 123. And my goal here is to match to my slower locomotive. So I put number 123 on the track and I'm gonna time how long it takes to go around the entire track at full speed. And I'll do a few iterations of that and write them down. Then I will time how long it takes to go around the track at half speed. And I will write that down. Then I put on number 134 and I will time it at those same intervals. Now, since I'm trying to match 134 to the slower 123, I'm going to trim down those settings until I get it pretty close. Every time I write a new value to the decoder, I have to time it again. It's very tedious, but you go through the process and get it close. So once you have your two locomotives close, it's time to consist them. For some reason, I wasn't able to use my locomotives with a simple consist. That's how I did it the last time I did speed matching on the channel here. So I had to make these into what's called an advanced consist. And advanced consisting is different for each brand of decoder. So I looked into my soundtracks documentation, which you can find online, and created an advanced consist out of these two locomotives in order to do the final tweaking on the speed match. When you have them on the track at the same time, you can put a little space in between the two locomotives and give them the same amount of throttle and see if one goes faster or slower than the other. And what this does for you is that it gives you a very good idea of fine tuning. So I'll run them together like this and just observe if the space between them gets larger or smaller. And then I will have on JMRI the program tab open for 134 because that's the one I'm trying to change. I'm trying to match it to 123. I'll have that open. And every time I observe 134's behavior, either pulling away or slowing down compared to 123, I'll either increase or decrease the value of the setting that I'm at. So for example, if I'm operating at the medium speed, that would be the V mid setting, which is in the middle of those three settings I showed you earlier. After fiddling around with it for an inordinate amount of time, or it seems like it anyway, I've decided that I'm satisfied with how close these are. So it's time to go run them. That's what we're really wanting to do, isn't it? So we're at the South Bay Historical Railroad Society on a Saturday morning. This is one of the days that we're open to the public at the SBHRS. And I'm going to do some testing on the end scale layout here. We're the only train on the yellow line, so I can go as slow or as fast as I want to. I got some great compliments from fellow members as well as visitors who were at the depot with their children. I didn't realize how popular this train would be, but it makes sense because it's one of the few trains that comes through town every single day. As I ease the train to a stop here at the station, I'm really struck with how good the low speed control is on these locomotives. And it's also cool to be able to have more than one length of a horn honk, which is what the old decoders I replaced had.
I don't have a scale speedometer at home. And as I was doing my speed matching, I looked at it and thought, okay, this looks close to 80 miles an hour, which is the maximum speed this train would be going at anyway. And that's what I set for my maximum speed, what I thought looked like 79 or 80 miles an hour. And it turns out that I was pretty close because this is what the speedometer registered. Look at the reading on the yellow line. One of the things I was really going after with the marker lights was I didn't want them to be too bright. And as you can see from this going away shot, you can notice them, but they're not terribly bright. Even though they work and look pretty good, I decided I wasn't completely satisfied with the way the marker lights look on that last car. The right side that I damaged when I drilled it out is really bothering me, so I'm swapping out the end glass from another one of the coaches and installing the rear markers on the undamaged one instead. I'm also redoing the fiber optics so they emit a more uniform light on both sides. How perfect you want things to be will obviously vary from person to person, but this is just one of those things I couldn't live with. This is way better. So the big goal at the start of this project was to have a centerpiece for my N-Scale collection, and I'm satisfied with what I've accomplished. I had help along the way, and want to thank everyone who provided materials, advice, and inspiration. I learned a lot and had a lot of fun too. I want to point out that I'm not some big expert at all this stuff, and it just goes to show that if I can do it, you can too.